This is the first video for section 7.1. There are two sections that we're going to cover in chapter 7, and the first one is over the basic ideas of this a continuous random variable and then more specifically the normal distribution. But first we're going to just do a quick reminder in case you don't remember from the chapter 6 video of what it means to be a discrete random variable versus a continuous random variable. Then we're going to look at uniform distribution so that we can understand what all uh, density curves, so both of these are density curves. And the properties of those curves are really great uh, for to look at and to understand with uniform distributions. But then our main focus is going to be on the normal distribution. Let me take a look at our ESOL lens for section 7.1. Uh, the existence level has actually quite a few things that, that you really just need to know exist. One of those things is the standard normal curve. Now, of course, same warning I usually give. Um, if you don't have me as an instructor and you just found this video, then please understand uh, this is what how I teach it. Your teacher may think that the standard normal curve is very important. Uh, same thing with um, the uh, tables for the normal distribution. I, we're not going to use those at all. Uh, we're going to be using StatCrunch, or you might be using... Um, your TI-84 calculator, but our calculators or StatCrunch are actually using calculus. It's calculus 2, and the standard normal curve and tables and all of that is for us people who don't have technology and don't know calculus. So we have technology, so we don't have to, to, to fall back onto these things. Uh, of course, the things that you'll need to know at a supported level will be uh, your stat crunch and what you'll need to be able to do with it uh, so that you can get the answers independently. I think, you know, you can have your notes with you, of course, um, note card or whatever, uh, but you can have that with you for your test. Um, but you still need to be able to interpret what we're going to learn about the area uh, and see and to help be able to interpret what that means in context with the problem. And then as far as lifetime uh, skills, this is more, I would say, just understanding Uh, you know, the, the general ideas of these normal distributions. There are so many things that end up being fairly normally distributed or we can approximate with a normal distribution. And there are some simple ideas like if you're not more than two standard deviations away from the mean, then it's not something unusual. It's not something to be worried about or concerned with or, you know, it's not whatever. So being able to, to identify that is, is useful. Okay, so we're going to start off with an example uh, that is actually not a normal distribution. This is a uniform distribution and there are some things that end up having a uniform distribution like this and uh, the, the nice thing about them is that the probabilities are very easy to, to calculate even though they are continuous. Um, so this is, is the first thing we're going to note is that we have a continuous situation here. Uh, so let's let's read through the example. One of the Knoxville and area transit buses or the cat buses leaves Northgate Shopping Center every 15 minutes. Someone approaching this particular bus stop might end up waiting anywhere from zero minutes to 15 minutes. So you could walk up to the bus stop right when the bus is sitting there and you just get right on the bus. You didn't even have to slow down. Or you could walk up right as the bus pulls off and you're going to have to wait for the next bus, which is a full 15 minutes. 
Or, of course, you could walk up at any time in between there. So, if we were had a discrete situation, we would have, you know, it could be zero minutes or exactly one minute or two minutes or three minutes. But that's not the case. So, this is going to be a continuous. So, of course, time is continuous. So, we're going to have a continuous distribution. So what are our possible values of X where it's the wait time in minutes for an individual arriving at the bus stop? Well, so before we wrote X equals and we would maybe say 0, 1, 2, something like that. That was when we had something discrete. When we don't have a discrete situation and it's something continuous, remember we said that a continuous random variable had infinite number of possible values for this x that we're talking about. Well, we're going to have to say that x is somewhere between 0 minutes and 15 minutes. And I'm going to use those square brackets because 0 and 15 are included. So you I might have to remember this from like an algebra class. So 0 and 15 are included when I use the brackets. If I did uh, parentheses 0 to 15, then that would be, would not be included. It would just be everything in between. So we're going to use this one. So all the different values can go anywhere from 0 minutes to 15 minutes. Now we want to draw a graph of this probability distribution. So if you remember, a discrete probability distribution, we had a graph and it looked kind of like this. Those aren't, I mean, that's not one that we actually did, but it had just lines. So whatever, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3. That was my X, and this was my probability. And I just had a vertical lines. Well, now that I have a continuous scale along my X axis, so this is going to be my time in minutes, wait time. It's going to go everywhere all the way from 0 to 15. And all of those times are equally likely. So I'm just going to draw, and I'll do kind of a dash line here. So this is just going to be straight across. This is called a uniform, and you might remember that from our shapes that we had. Um, when we talked about our graphs in chapter two, this is our uniform distribution. This is a case where we would have a uniform distribution. And so here's the thing. We have two rules for probability distributions, or excuse me, for uh, density curves. Now these should have been in your Uh, interactive assignment, but one is that the area under the curve, and I may have these out of order, has to equal one. And the other rule is that the curve must be on or above the x-axis. So I kind of put that, that's its own little, own little thing. So this, these actually connect directly to the rules for probability. 
uh, and for probability distributions. So our probability distributions have to have, um, all the probabilities have to be between zero and one. So zero would be on the axis and somewhere above one, just meaning it's not negative. So that's what number two there says. And then all of our probabilities have to add up to one. Well, what we're gonna see is that there is a connection. Oops. That area is probability. We'll see that. So when I, if I can find the area, and that's why I wanna use the uniform distribution first, because I know how to find the area of a rectangle. So if I can find the area, then I can find the probability. Now, what we need, what we're missing right now is this height. We need to know how far, how tall this bar is, right? Because if I'm gonna find the area of a rectangle, then I'm gonna have to have uh, a base and a height. So what I need to do is in order for this area of this rectangle to be one, so my area is base times height, All right? This is gonna be H. Well, I know my area. I know how big my base is. Zero to 15 is 15. I need my height. This is one of the very few calculations you'll have to do. Simple little algebra step. If we have 15 times H equals one, then we can get rid of the 15. We can divide by 15 to get H by itself. So H equals 1 15th. So now I have a, a graph. So instead of that H being there, I'm gonna put one over 15. So I now have this rectangle that is 15 by 1 15th. So my area is one. So let's look more at this idea of area and probability being the same thing. So if I wanna know what are the chances someone will have to wait more than 10 minutes. So here's my graph. Again, it's a little bit smaller, but I have my uniform distribution, my time uh, here, my wait time. Could be anywhere between zero and 15. Well, I'm gonna mark 10 about right here. It's not perfect, but that's about a third of the way. So I think about five being maybe right there. And I want to know more than 10 minutes. So I basically want to find the area of that rectangle. And so I remember that the probability, and I'm gonna use my X, is greater than 10 minutes is gonna be the area, which area of a rectangle is base times height. So what's my base here? Will be, if I go from 10 to 15, that's gonna be five. And then here's my height. So five times 15, one over 15, excuse me. Well, five over 15, that's one third or 0.3 repeating. And there we go. There's my probability. Which makes sense, right? Because about a third of the time, if it's if every time is possible, anywhere between 0 and 10, if all of those times are equally likely, then a third of the time I'll have to wait 10 minutes more than 10 minutes for the bus. All right, our next question says, what are the chances someone has to wait exactly three minutes? Well, let's see, three will be somewhere right along in here, right? It's approximate, so that's fine. So if my probability is supposed to be area, well, we have a problem um, because a line, this line right here, a line does not have a width or a base. It, it has, in this case, a height, but technically, 
a line is defined to have only that one dimension, it's it only has a length, not a width. It only has a height, not a base. Oops, sorry, 15, there we go. So this ends up being zero. Well, that's kind of disappointing. And if you see this question like this, then that is what the homework is likely looking for. Zero minute or zero chance. Uh, because if there's, and this is, here's the other one. If there's an infinite number of different times, right, between zero and 15 minutes, if we go down to the teeniest, you know, millisecond of a millisecond, I don't even know what that would be, but even less than that, um, then there's, you know, this infinite number of possibilities. Well, if I take one out of an infinite number, then my probability just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And it, it, one out of infinity is undefined, but it would be none. So if we really wanted to, what we would need, if we wanted to know what are the chances I'm going to have to wait three minutes, well, you would either need to say between two and four, which then is really not three minutes, but you could get really close to it. You could say that you want to know between uh, 2.99 and 3.01, right? So 0.99 of a minute, let's see if a minute 60 seconds. that's going to be 0.6, so about half a second in each direction. Um, it's actually 1.2 seconds altogether, but that's, that's pretty close. So we could do that. Now we have a base, right, because our base will be this 0 0.02 of a minute. And 0 0.02 of a minute, again... is uh, 1.2 seconds. And so if I have 0 0.02 times 1 out of 15, oops, 15, not 5, there we go, then my probability is going to be 0 0.08. And so that's really not a zero chance, right? That's like an 8% chance of having to wait three minutes. Um, and that's, you know, three minutes and half a second to two minutes and uh, all, you know, 59 seconds and a half second. So there we go. But this is, this is the actual answer that, that your homework will ask. If you've got one like that, that's what it's looking for. We can't find the probability of exactly when we're dealing with continuous distribution.